Welcome to Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Steph. I'm Vicki. And today we're going to share how we store this cello stove and all the gear. Soul Stove is a brand that makes smokeless fire pits and we actually bought this one a year and a half ago and this is their Ranger model which is a portable model and we got this so we could take it between both of our houses and potentially camping. But as we started using it and loving it, we accumulated a lot of gear and all the supplies you need and all the different types of fuel and so I wanted a place to store all of that. And Steph came up with what I think is a genius idea to store not only the stove but firewood and all of the things that you need if you're going to have a fire and let me cook some s'mores. So we're very excited to share that with you. And stay tuned to the end because I'll show you all the stuff that's in my station and why it's there. We knew we wanted something to fully cover the station when not in use. This would hopefully protect it from the elements and prolong the life of the things inside. We were going to make a custom cover but instead we found this firewood storage cover for 30 bucks on Amazon. Fabric alone would cost more than that, so we purchased the two-foot version and used that as our measurements going forward. To make the top, we're going to use a butcher block style countertop that we had left over from a husky adjustable work table that we only needed the legs from. So here we're measuring and cutting with our track saw. We placed the cover over the top to make sure it was a good fit. To hold all the gear, we're going to use wall control metal pegboard. This is a great versatile organizational system as the hooks can be moved around to suit your needs. Next, we're cutting our 2x4s to 40 inches to make the height of the unit. We also cut 4 at 17 inches and 2 at 13 inches. These will serve as supports for the middle shelf and support for one of the panels. I laid all four legs next to each other and marked 20 inches down from the top, which is where the 2x4 supports for the center shelf will be placed. A full 20 inches in the top section was the perfect height to accommodate the solo stove ranger and some accessories. I did make sure to take into account the thickness of the shelf so that the full top section was 20 inches. To connect everything together, we're going to use pocket holes that we made with our Craig pocket hole jig. I added pocket holes to the edges of each of the supports. To attach, we glued and screwed them into place. We decided not to use pressure treated 2x4s even though these will be outside. One, because we're going to finish it with Olympic Elite solid stain which is used to protect wood from the elements and two, we're covering it so it will not be directly in the elements. With the frame done, I put the top on to check the fit. We used the rest of the tabletop to make the middle shelf. We cut it in the same manner with a track saw. We used a scrap piece of 2x4 to mark each corner as we're going to cut this piece out as the shelf will sit right on top of the frame. We're using our Makita track saw rail as a fence for the jigsaw so we could get a nice straight cut. Mom followed with a wet dry vac and this actually worked really well to cut the sections out. To finish the cut edge of the tabletop, we used shellac and it blended so well you can barely tell what the cut edge is. Next we cut two supports for the wall control front panels that we're going to be using on the side. Now if you notice we made the pocket holes closer together and towards the bottom on the top and towards the top on the bottom. This is so the pocket holes are not in the way of the screws for the panel. And here's the frame all ready to be painted. And here it is all done. Mom used the Olympic Elite Solid Stain in Midnight Blue. Mom also sprayed Flex Seal liquid rubber on each of the bottom of the legs because we originally planned to put this on the ground and wanted to make sure the legs would hold up. But in the end we actually put this on pavers so we probably didn't need to use the Flex Seal. Next we placed the wall control panels. Wall control panels come in many sizes and colors. We went with all galvanized panels to go with the look of the solo stove. This is a wall control rail that I'm adding three pegboard plastic jar holders to. We've been using wall control products in many projects over the years and are brand ambassadors for wall control. This is not a sponsored project, but we did get wall control products for free. 
And we do have a discount code that you can use if you want to buy some products yourself. Here we're using the included screws to attach it to the 2x4. This is the wall control fun panel that we'll be adding to the front. And now we're adding the rail to the top and the placement is based on the height of the jars. And on the side, we're adding another fun panel that's being screwed into those two supports we added earlier. While editing this project, I realized if I was to do this again, I would probably have added the fun panel down just a little bit so it's even with the fun panel on the front and also added another rail on the side so that they both look the same. We moved the unit to my house to finish up the last few steps. We easily put the shelf in place and it's heavy enough that it doesn't need to be attached as it just sits right on top of the supports. I didn't mention this earlier, but all the sizing of the structure is based on how far out the wall control hooks that we're using will stick out because everything had to fit underneath the top for the cover to be placed correctly. Because of this, the top actually has to be placed off center, which we thought would bother us once it's in place, but now we don't even notice. We use L brackets to attach the top to the legs. We also added a folding hook that we can use to hang a light from and fold when not in use. Time to put it in place. We always imagined it would go inside the circle of boxwood plants that I have in my backyard, but after placing it, we realized it really stood out too much and we decided to move it into the back area between a tree and a post. So this is what it looked like within the circle and this is what it looks like outside the circle. We never envisioned it this way, but it's even better than we imagined. The area was a little uneven, so we decided to build it up and add some pavers. To access the station from the circle, we decided to cut out a section to make a simple walk area. We happen to have some extra bricks to lay down to finish it. Now it's all done and I wanna show you actually what's on it and why it's here. So starting with the jars right here, these are great. Uh, the one right in the middle is some different fire starters. So these are some that I bought from the store and some that I've made. And then I have a jar that has gloves in it because when I'm done with using the fire pit and I wanna clean it up, I put these on my hand so I don't get soot on them. And then this one has some flint and steel. It has a knife in it and it has some hand cleaner and hand cleaner can be used as a fire starter as well. And then I have these uh, sticks is great for making s'mores or hot dogs or anything you wanna do over the fire and they fit right nicely here on the side. And then obviously I have a way to start a fire. And this is actually a pump, um, but I use this if there is smoke. Sometimes there is smoke, um, but if there's any smoke, I can use this to kind of direct it and help the fire um, if it's starting to go out. And then these are fire gloves. So when I need to pick up um, like the grill top or something that's hot, I can use these. And this is just a candle for um, just extra atmosphere. And um, so I can light this and just have another extra light up. And over here, this is a grill top that I can put on top to make food. This shovel is actually for putting extra pellets onto the fire. And these are different ways of helping with the fire to put logs on it or to move, move and stuff in, within the fire pit around. To go along with the station, we decided we needed to create a s'mores station. This will stay in the house, but when it's s'mores time, everything is in one convenient place. It has plates, napkins, wet wipes, and all the s'mores fixings. We actually use gluten-free graham crackers that already have chocolate on it. We discovered these as my nephews have celiac disease, but even if you're not gluten-free, these are great and make s'mores making easy. And that is our solo stove and s'mores station. Keep in mind, our station was designed for the Solo Stove Ranger model, so if you have a larger fire pit, your measurements will be different. What we learned. Now, Solo Stove does make a product that holds their Solo Stove, some of their tools, and some firewood. Um, but when I looked at it, the retail price was $550, and it didn't have a place to hold all the items that I wanted to, so I thought I could probably make it for a little bit less. So all the materials that we purchased were about $130, so we definitely were able to make it less and be able to customize it to exactly our needs. We used a pizza butcher block that we already had at hand, so we didn't have to buy that. But if you want to do something similar, you could buy actually buy butcher block for around $115 or so, or you can make something out of two by twos or even a piece of plywood, just make it your own. Now, as I use this, I'll probably find more tools and supplies I want to add or take away. And that's what's great about wall control and metal pegboard is I can move around the hooks wherever I want and have it customized exactly to what I need. We also discovered the back of the wall control panels can hold hooks just the same as the front. Here we hooked the solo stove handle in place 
and added two hooks to hold the lid in place when not in use. Now you might be wondering how's this gonna hold up and I don't know, it's gonna be out in the weather here in Florida in the rain, storms, things like that. So we will keep you updated uh, next year, how it's holding up the year after. So make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our new projects. Now, Steph has a second channel, it's called Hi, I'm Steph, where she shares things that are more outdoors. And she's gonna be doing a more in-depth look at this Ranger solo stove, along with all the things that we purchased. So subscribe to her channel. You can just hit that little link right up there and you can be taken to her page and see the update on that and all of her outdoor videos. All right, s'mores time. Ooh.